don't you take it easy, Run Kitch? We're not trying to tear each other apart. How can men be gentle with an assailant, Sergeant? Right now, we're only after the technique. We don't want anybody injured. Yes, sir. Lee, are you hurt? Can I help you out? I don't want any help. Let's try that again. Assistant Sheriff, Los Angeles County. You know, there's a lot more to a good deputy than his physical fitness, his uniform, or his badge. There are personal qualities that are so important they can make or break a peace officer. This story about the Sheriff's Academy will show you what I mean. You want to cripple a man? All right, all right, break it up. Yeah, you probably got a pull back muscle. We'll be all right by tomorrow. What's this guy trying to do? Make us all look like stupid, incompetent fools, all except him? All right, now, all right. Take a ten-minute break. I want to talk to you in my office. Yes, sir. Well, I wish you would visit the Academy. It would give us a chance to talk about it personally. <laughs> yes, indeed, Mrs. White. Well, thank you for calling. Bye. We'll have to have that orientation meeting with the student deputies' wives before the next class starts. It's a good idea, Lieutenant. What's this all about? Well, Rockets flipped Lane. Lane was injured. Just a pulled muscle. The class resentment for Rockets broke right out into the open. Matter of fact, Todd was ready to come out swinging. All right, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. What about this? Lieutenant, I cannot understand these men. <laughs> well, the men can't understand you either. But I learned in the Czech underground that unless a man strives for mental and physical superiority, he has no chance to survive. We're training American peace officers, not one-man armies for any underground. But a peace officer, too, Lieutenant, should be stronger than the next man. He should be more clever. He should be a leader of all men, should he not? He should. If you mean a leader by serving rather than dominating other men, yes. Lieutenant, will a master be inclined to obey his servant? We Americans think he will, if the servant is protecting his right to be master. Look. You lived under the oppression of two separate police state governments in Europe. Yes, I did, sir. I saw the Nazis take my father out of our house into a nearby field and shoot him. He was a brave man, but he wasn't clever enough. Do, uh, do you approve of this sort of police method? Indeed, I do not. The second time it happened, when my country fell behind the Iron Curtain, I escaped. How did I manage to escape, Lieutenant? I escaped because I was mentally and physically superior. And that's what I keep trying to tell your students. That's why I keep trying to help them. It's the Academy's job to train the students, not yours. But perfection is the goal, Lieutenant. Why should they care where they gain it? You became an American citizen. Now you want to become a peace officer. I do, sir. More than anything. Look, Runkich, I'll be quite frank with you. I think you would be a great asset to the Sheriff's Department. You're able, you're intelligent, you speak five languages, which is a great asset, except for one flaw. Yes, I know, sir. My age. No, not your age. 
You are older than the other students, yes. But that could be to your advantage, too. How do you mean, sir? To protect the rights and property of the free man, an officer must have the ability to gain the trust and respect of the citizens as well as the fellow officers. Yes, I do see that. Being older should have helped you gain the respect of at least the other student deputies. It hasn't. But if they would only Just realize... Just one moment, please. Just ask yourself one question. Who's out of step? You or 19 other men? Lieutenant, are you telling me that I must leave the academy? With your help, I won't have to tell you that. Thank you, sir. I will try very hard. Thank you. Students at the academy are deputy sheriff recruits, beginning their probationary period with the department. After passing written, oral, and physical examinations, the recruits come to the academy for a concentrated six weeks course. Here for the first time, the department has a chance to study and evaluate a recruit's physical, mental, and psychological fitness to be a creditable peace officer. You just can't tell until you work with a man. On paper, Runkitch was one of the best prospects ever to enter the academy. This is the first half of time fire. Five shots in 20 seconds. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Ready on the firing line. because of muscular tension, Todd. It's not entirely. It's the tension in your arm. If there's any tension, you're causing it. Look, so just relax your arm like that. Then you squeeze the trigger steadily. This is slow fire, Runkage. What are you trying to do? He's trying to impress the peasants, Sergeant. What else? But slow fire, rapid fire, it's all the same principle. Can't sir. you shut that guy up? All right, all right. Runkage, you're out of order. Wait your turn. I'm sorry, sir. All right, Todd. Now, just take it easy, relax. You're doing fine. That was three days after I talked to him. The tension between him and the other students grew steadily day by day. Runkage just didn't seem to get the idea. And remember that, there's some cause responsible for every fire, accident or arson. Are there any questions? Sergeant, when I was in the underground during the war, we used some rather clever incendiary devices for our sabotage fires. I think it would be a benefit to the class to hear about them. Here we go again. Sergeant, we're interested in current incendiary devices, not ancient history. Sergeant, you said a set was a place where a fire was started. By now, the students have become deliberately rude to Runkitch. Sergeant Nelson told me he, too, was finally ready to give up. But I wasn't. Not yet. The station assignment for radio car instruction is car 142. Yes, sir. The deputies in the car will be Jake Wills and Ben Thompson. You will be the third man in the car. Your assignment is to observe, that's all. Is that clear? Yes, sir. You understand that the officers also will observe you and turn into me a detailed report of their opinions of you as a deputy. I understand, sir. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Oh, Runkage. Yes, sir? Just one more thing. Both Wills and Thompson are veterans in this department. I don't think they would welcome any suggestions from you as to how to do their job more efficiently. They've been doing it for some time to the satisfaction of the sheriff. I do understand, sir. Thank you. How's the 
tie, Buster. Daphne, I told you before, you keep calling me Buster, I'm gonna start calling you Daffy. <sighs> What's wrong with your friend? Don't he eat? I'm not hungry, thank you. Oh, he has an accent. Yes, I believe I have. What you trying to do, Buster? Glamorize the department? Runkich there is a new man from the academy. New? At his age? Well, since I'm not eating, I think I'll wait for you in the car, just in case you're calling us. Relax, Runkage. We checked out with the dispatcher. Sit down, boy. Have a sinker or a slice of pie. Thank you. I'll wait out in the car. Long night ahead, Runkage. What's the matter with him? He's scared of girls or something? Oh, he's okay. Kind of quiet. Those guys from Europe, always so different. Oh, he's all right. Let him sit out there and listen to the radio calls. Won't hurt him any. They're calling us. What is it? The disturbance. It's 800 Glover Street. It's near Johnson Street. OK, let's go. Well, they ain't taking me. Get along now. Settle down, both of you. Big guy. Big guy. Take off that circus suit and I'll beat you into a butterball. I know, Bobo. I know. You go on home now. Yeah, why? Go on. Go on. Ah, Mitch is scared stiff of you guys. I never seen one of you sheriff clowns that ain't all blubber under his circus suit. Okay, go on, Bobo. Come on, Bobo. I know where Mitch lives. If they paid you off your weight in large, you'd be a millionaire. Now, what circus let you out? You miserable creature. You're disgraced to the country you live in. Get out of my sight. Go on. Get out of here. Look at him. He's a strong arm Hitler Nazi. That's enough of that. You mean you let that beast go after he insulted your uniform? That's right. They were just blowing off steam. Let's go. They'll never respect you, or the law. Never. Not until you teach them. By beating it into them? I don't know what country you come from, boy. But over here, peace officers never harangue a crowd. That's the last thing you should ever do. We came here to stop a riot, not start one. But I dispersed them, didn't I? They obeyed me. I told them to go, and they left. Yeah. They left, and every man of them will carry a grudge against every peace officer he sees for the next six months. With the help of Army Ordnance, our student deputies learn about demolitions. They study smoke for different kinds of powder used. They learn personally how to handle explosives. I can handle it. Don't drop these things. I know what I'm doing. You must be very careful. Never drop a dynamite cap unless you want it to explode. They're very sensitive to shock. You were lucky. What's he trying to do, blow his head off? All right, Rockage. But we don't do it that way here. I was only crimping the cap. He was biting it to crimp it? But we always did it like that in the underground. I know. And that's the way the old miners used to do it, and still do. But we want you to do it our way, the way the Army Ordnance Instructor showed you. All right, sir. Now, come on, I'll show you how it's done. The point is, when you're in school, you're on duty. Strictly speaking, there's no excuse for you not being here. Well, sir, my wife was... I know, Lane, I know. Your wife took sick, you took her to the hospital, and when you called me, I told you to take care of her. But Todd here rides with you every day. Why didn't you call him? I was so worried, I couldn't think. I tried to call him, but there was no answer. I thought he was on his way to pick me up. I waited and waited, and it got so late. I guess I should have taken the bus, even though it takes about two hours to get here. But it won't happen again, Lieutenant. All right, let's forget it. 
Now you both know what we mean when we say every peace officer should foresee and cover every conceivable emergency. All right, you both can go. Olaine, how is your wife getting along? She's going to be all right, Lieutenant. Thanks. Good. Good to hear it. A couple of good men for the department, Lieutenant. Yeah, I think so, too. What do you make of this, Sergeant? Oh, Wills and Thompson's report on Runkitch, huh? Mm-hmm. Deputy Runkitch displayed traits in dealing with the public, indicating he will not be suited for this work. I know, and Thompson agrees, too. Agree emphatically, unless this man's attitude changes radically, Thompson. That's your opinion, too, isn't it, Sergeant? Well, he's 30 years of age, Lieutenant. Ever since he was a kid, all he's ever known is strength equals power. Mm, Sergeant Towers says the same things. Well, it's pretty rough to drop a man from the academy. Aside from everything else, he's already spent over $200 on uniforms, guns, equipment. But in this case... Sergeant, I'm not going to drop Runkage. I may be a fool... Can you conscientiously recommend him? No, but I can't conscientiously drop him either. Look, will you um, have him come in to see me after the next class? Yes, sir. You're right, Sergeant Powers. Absolutely right about the methods in the police state. You know, I could have given that lecture myself. Yes, sir, I imagine with your experience, you would qualify on that subject. May I add just one thing, Sergeant? They're two distinctly different methods, both very effective. One, the direct approach. Two, the subtle approach. Now, let's take number one, the Nazis, for example. They'll walk into your house, take any member of the household into an adjacent field, and without pretense of trial, shoot him. Now, wait. You ought to listen to this. Wait, listen. How can they learn? How can they ever know about these things? Frank Hitch, Lieutenant Adams would like to see you. Yes. Yes, I want to see Lieutenant Adams too. This is wrong. This is all wrong. Well, yes, Captain, we believe that sending them out on department business is a very important part of their training. Sixteen men? Yes, sir. You want them Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. Good. They'll be there. Goodbye, Captain. Lieutenant, I... 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 Oh, control yourself, Runkage. Lieutenant, of all your students, I am the only one who knows that the American way of life is the finest in the world. The students know it, too. But will they listen? No. What I have to tell them might someday help them to preserve this way of life. But will they listen? No. They won't listen to you until they can respect you. In this country, strength alone is not enough to earn the respect of men. Why can't you understand that, Runkage? In this country, strength must serve, but never command. Respect. Last night, I saw three Americans insult their peace officers. Is that... is that respect? In a manner of speaking, yes. When an unarmed citizen can speak his mind to an armed officer without fear of violent harm, then that's a demonstration of the rights of free men, which we acknowledge and respect. I do not understand. I thought, what could be nobler than be a peace officer in this country and preserve this way of life? What did I discover? Disgrace, abuse, degrade it. I'll never be American peace officer, never. Why can't you understand, Runkitch? We have certain rules in our country, certain ways of getting along with each other. You must learn this, too. I'm sorry, sir. I must resign. I cannot wear this uniform but pride, and I will not wear it in humiliation. I'm sorry, I must resign. One minute. Academy Lieutenant Adams. Oh, yes, Captain. What? Hungarian? Well, why don't you call a foreign relation man? Oh, that's right, he did go back east. Well, no, Captain, we don't have anybody here who speaks uh, Hungarian. I speak it, sir. Well, I know it's a rough situation, but I'm sure you'll be able to find an interpreter someplace. I speak Hungarian, Lieutenant. Yes, I understand, Captain, but I... Just a minute, Captain. What did you say? 
I said, I speak Hungarian, sir. Oh, Captain, I found somebody here. I'll take him right over. Good. A man and his wife are uh, barricaded themselves in the house. Candle won't speak English. You mind if I bring along a couple of the students, Lieutenant? No, it's all right. Let's go in the kitchen. son is in custody, a burglary suspect. We have a warrant to search the house, but every time an officer steps onto the front walk, the man shouts, I shoot, I shoot. You want my man to talk to him on the public address system? Well, we can try it. Lieutenant, may I try something first? All right, but take care of yourself. All right, sir. In America now, you and I, we must speak English. You take my son. But if your son is not a thief, he'll be returned to you. No thief. But the law says I must examine your house to learn the truth. No thief. You take my son. You wish us harm. You foolish man, man, America now. Nobody wishes you harm. No thief. No, no, I shoot. Look, look at me. I'm an American peace officer. I want no harm to you or your sad wife. I wish no harm to your son, but I must examine your house now. Look how patient we are with you. Your eyes are weak. Your mind is thick and stubborn. If he wished harm to you, why wouldn't we fire all our guns at once and burn your house? Go away! I kill! I'll tell you once more. I'm an American peace officer who knows how to shoot very quickly and very straight. But my gun is in my holster. My duty is to keep you from harm. What you must learn, little father, is that in this country we do not use force. We have learned to live together and to trust and respect one another. And now I'll come in. Sir, they understand now. You can come in. That took courage, Lieutenant. It really did. You know, I think he's finally beginning to get the idea. Say that Deputy Rockage has been with us now for several years, and we think he's a fine example of a peace officer. It's interesting to see how many new men turn to him for advice and extra training. They say he's the most soft-spoken and understanding teacher they've ever known. And I'd like to introduce Eugene W. Biscaloose, Sheriff of Los Angeles County. Friends, the members of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department are pleased to furnish technical advice for Code 3. So you may enjoy an authentic presentation of law enforcement. I hope you'll be with us again next week. Thank you very much.